Hello there. I'm Nancy Reynolds, Stampin' with Nutsy, and woohoo! It's woohoo weekend. How fun is this? I have learned some great tips. The scalloped die that Annette showed us, I had never thought about putting that a ribbon through it. I don't know what, I don't know, but it was a great tip. And Tracy's project was wonderful. So I'm going to put you down on the table and show you my new little fun fold. It's really super easy, but I like the way it looks. So here you go. Okay, there we are. This is a diagonal easel card. Look at that. Isn't that fun? And you will also notice that it's a very sparkly one because um, I used shimmer paper on this one and a lot of Wink of Stella. I just really love Wink of Stella. I'm going to put this over to the side and show you my stamp set. The Butterfly Brilliant stamp set, which is one solid die, which you will see in just a moment. And not a die, but a stamp. And then a, a die that cuts them all out at once. So I'm going to show them to you in a moment. It's, a, it's really a fun set because you get to color. And I like to color. I used lots of blends. I've got Magenta Madness and Polished Pink and um, Moonlight Madness. Misty Moonlight, that's what it is. Always have your color lifter with you because you never know when you're going to need to use it. There's some Fresh Freesia, some Daffodil Delight, some Pale Papaya. I just had fun with color. So we're going to start with stamping our butterflies. Put this aside. I've got all our supplies here. When I pull them out, I will show them to you. You need a piece of cardstock that's big enough for the die. And I highly recommend using your Stamparatus because you want to make sure you get a really good um, coverage on the die and that's the way to ensure that you're always going to stamp in the right place. I just cut a piece of half piece of Whisper White and I'm going to put it in here. Remember with your magnets don't let them touch. They don't play well together. Make sure I've got that in the right spot so that this will get covered. Let me move this magnet up here. Slip my case underneath it for support when I ink up. Oh, well, that didn't work. Hmm. How about right there? Yes, that works. Okay, here we are ready to go. I am using Memento Tuxedo Black Ink. I have re-inked it, so I am hoping for some good coverage. The tuxedo is really the only one that's got kind of a felt pad, so if you need to twist a little to make sure it's covered, go ahead and do that with that one. I'm going to close it. And I don't know about you, but my hands are getting a little older than they used to be, and so pressing doesn't always work well for me. Although it didn't do too bad. So I bought off of Amazon some hockey pucks for the, the air hockey game. And I saw that someone was using a dry erase eraser for dry erase pens. And I thought, well, what else could I use? And isn't that a pretty color? I do like blue. I also find that standing up, I get a little more pressure without hurting myself. Let's see. Still pretty good, but not right there. So let's give it another shot. And then if you don't have enough ink, and it looks like I transferred all that I had on here, go ahead and ink it up again. Because that's why we use the Stamparatus, so you can re-ink until everything is covered. 
which is very good. Okay, let's try it again. So we're going to press it down, make sure we get good coverage. I still don't like that right there. Oh, that's a little better. Okay, so I'm not going to clean this up right now. I will clean up my stamp a little bit later. I'll move it aside. I'm going to sit back down, put my glasses on, because what I would recommend is you do your coloring now. I have actually already colored a whole set and cut out the butterflies that we're going to use. But I wanted to color one because I wanted to show you that I did something a little different than I've done before. Let's go with um, let's go with this cute little one. Oh, I used cinnamon cider on that with a little bit of bronze. So I'm going to start with the bronze. Use my. pointed end and color in the body. Now I am just using basic white cardstock here. This is not the shimmer cardstock and I want to show you why. Hmm. How about a little pale papaya? I'll use the darker and I'm not doing a lot of shading. Just kind of picking some areas where it might be nice to have a little darker color. And let's see. Let me bring back that copper because I see where it's shaded right in here. So I'm going to give that a little more shading. And see where else I would like it to have some color. Oh, hi, I see people are watching. Oh, I'm glad you like the hockey puck idea. It really does help. Plus you can get them in different colors. Maybe a little copper in here. Okay. Then I'm going to take the light pale papaya. Probably use the brush end because I'm just going to swirl it over what I've already colored. Kind of blending in the colors a little bit, softening the edges. And what color do you make butterflies? Well I was looking at pictures of butterflies and they come in all kinds of colors so I just decided it's an artist's choice and you're the artist. Oh you can't see me coloring that's because I'm way down. So sorry. So I colored the darker pale papaya in a few little areas over here. And then I went over it, to, and as you go over it, it gets a little darker. I did bronze in the body. Oh, and I really do need to use the, the other end. And I just highlighted a little bit where there are highlights. So we'd have a little more color here. Anyway, that's what I did. And now that I've done this and made it all darker, I like it better. So going it over it is not a bad idea. Then I'll take my um, light pale papaya and do another little quick over the whole thing. I think that's deepened the color and I really do like that. Okay. And butterflies are so pretty. And I just have always thought butterflies should sparkle. And since I have Wink of Stella and you have Wink of Stella, we can make them sparkle. Here we go. Sparkly butterflies. And I actually did this on every single butterfly because I could. 
And then what I did, I am not a fan of the white edge left around the um, die cuts. And so I took my light smoky slate. Oh, let me get that out of the way. And I just outlined my butterflies. Now you'd think I would have done the one I colored, huh? But no. This is going to be cut off. Most of it's cut off, so it doesn't, you don't have to be super careful around the far edge. Okay, and this is cut out. So there we are. The die cut Let's see. Just wanted to remind you of the sandwich for die cutting. It's a uh, plate one. There you go, plate one. The plate two, three, and if you're cutting down, which is the way I normally cut, is you want your plate that you're going to cut into down first. Here are my butterflies. I lined them up very carefully and ran them to the stamp and cut and emboss machine and wound up with all of these lovely little butterflies. So I hope you like them. Oh, you like sparkle too? Yep, sparkle does make everything better. I'm a fan of sparkle. The more the better. So the next thing I did, once I got those all done, I took the die. It is the stitched greenery die. And this is going to be my piece on the front. So it is, let me grab it. I have one all done and it's got the measurements on it. It's four and an eighth by five and three eighths inches or 10 by 14.4 centimeters. And I decided to cut up on this one because I wanted to make sure trying to get this straight. So I put my uncut plate on the bottom, my die and paper facing up and my cutting plate, the one I'm cutting into, on the top, and ran it through the stamp and cut and emboss machine, and came up with this. I just love this pattern. Um, it makes a really nice background. What I did then, because I just wanted to get this together, is I took my, my butterflies and I laid them out, a little bit and one of the things I like to do is kind of break the fabric break it down a little bit not tear it you have to be gentle but make so that it's a little pliable because I wanted and I like to have a little um, depth on the card so I just use my bone folder and I carefully twist and turn gently until I get to the point where I can bend up the wings and they've got a little bit of a downward, you see that a little bit of a downward curl? Just a little bit. So he is going to go there. I don't know why, but I really like cinnamon cider on the butterfly. So we're gonna use the cinnamon cider one. We're gonna bend it and curl it and bend its body kind of so that they're up. The only place I'm attaching them is this little strip right here. So it's going here. Maybe it needs to be down a little flatter because it's going to be underneath. And then something bright, a mixture of magenta madness and polished pink, I believe. 
Oh my, it's bright. And it's sparkly. I like it. A little gentle twist on the, uh, by the body. So we've got some height. And then I just took, because I want them to stay down, I decided I needed to use my Tombow glue. And let's see, I glued these down first. It is okay to go just a teensy bit, not much, but a teensy bit above the edge. Because this card is cut a little bit smaller than your card base. Put him down and my little friend here. So I didn't really do any popping of them on the card. No dimensionals for the front except for the sentiment, which we will get to soon. He had this one's a little bit bigger, so. There I have a little, whatever a grouping of butterflies is, I've got it. I'm sure it's not a flock. We're just going to set this aside, let it rest. We're going to set it aside where I will not lose it, okay? Then we're going to do the card base, because that's the fun part. The card base is one half sheet of paper cut the long way. So in Imperial, it's four and a quarter inches by 11 inches, scored in half at five and a half. For Imperial, I mean for metric, it's 10.5 by 29.7 centimeters. Again, just scored straight in half. The fun part is to make this, and I want to thank Ange McKay for being my inspiration here. I had not seen this fold. So what you do is you take your, once you've got it folded, you've folded it, you've burnished it with your bone folder. So you've got a nice, good, solid fold. Get out your stamp, your um, trimmer. Take your cutting blade and get it out of the way. Don't be tempted with that cutting blade. Um, ask me how I know those accidents happen. Your bottom fold is going right in your cutting track, or your scoring track in this case, and you're going to line up your corner up at the top, right in the track. Then put your arm down. I like to start in the middle when I'm doing um, corners because it keeps them from um, getting eaten up in the, you know, dented in the corner. Let's get that out of the way. And now you're going to fold on the line in and burnish it. So as you can see, so when we get our inside done, and our little tiny butterfly in the corner up on dimensionals, it's going to be able to sit right there and show off our lovely focal piece. So you're going to want to adhere this, and we can do that right now, because the fewer pieces that are around, the better. Don't go clear to the edge because there's a little tiny bit of a border. But you are going to definitely want to have enough glue on there to give it some stability. So let's come here, put it in. Bring it up. Press that down. And we have some stamping to do. So I have a piece 
of designer series paper. And I've just been waiting to use this, this marvelous paper. It's free for celebration and it's really fun. This is the same size as the card front, four and an eighth by five and three eighths inches or 10 by 14.4 centimeters. And I'm going to put a sentiment. Let's see, can you see this? I put a sentiment up in the upper left hand corner. Kind of balances that um, raised butterfly. I used Misty Moon Light Ink and the sentiments from the stamp set. So we will stamp. The little things you do make such a big difference. Isn't that sweet? I am going to make sure I got a good inking. There we are. That's all we're stamping on that one. Let's get my little post-it notes out of the way. And I used seal for this. It's not going to need to have, it's not going to be a moving piece like our butterflies in the top are for the easel card. So, we'll just put this on. And I also used seal to put it on the inside of the card. I think this side is pretty too. But there's something about this side that just wows me. So here we go. Just kind of centering it. I know I left my ink pad open, but we're going to stamp one more thing. So I'm trying to be careful. Okay, there we are. Let's do that one little bit of stamping. Now you know how you always have off cuts when you are um, cutting your cards. Well, that's what I used. It's just one of these quick little, cute little strips. I had a cute little strip of the designer series paper and I looked at it and I thought, well, that works. So I used the little thank you and hopefully I will get this straighter than I did last night. I had to stamp it three times before I was semi-happy with it. I think that's going to work. Close up the ink pad before I make a mess. Which I do a great job of. I am going to take my snips and kind of match that edge. Oh my goodness, that was hard to pick up. Grab a silicone mat because I'm going to just use my seal for this. Put it on my strip. That was in case I got seal over the edges because nothing sticks to the silicone mat. No glue, not hot glue. And I'm just going to eyeball it and snip at the angle, sort of. Put a couple dimensionals on it, which are right here. I knocked a whole bunch of other things on the floor, but the dimensionals are here. And we'll put our sentiment on our card. I'm going to have a question for you too when, when I'm done. Oh, garbage can. Yes. I just kind of took and I'm going to just kind of tuck it under because that was a little bit longer than my other one. Or maybe I'll put it up here for this one because it fits right in there. That's what I'm doing. Thank you at the top for this one. And then our little butterfly. Let's do the one. Let's see. I think I should use the smallest butterfly. Again, I'm going to just 
just a little bit of a bend on his body and wings. And put mini dimensionals down the middle to give it support. And I'll just take this off. It does make it a little bit thicker when you close up the card, but it's worth it. I'm putting it quite far down into the edge and pressing it good. Oh, you know what we didn't do? We didn't put gems on it because it needs more sparkle. So here's our butterfly popped up in the corner. And I thought we would use the iridescent gems. Aren't they pretty? They have kind of a pinkish tone to them, but I also see some yellow. I don't know if it depends on where you're at. I'm going to splurge and take a big one and put it here. A medium one up in this area. And maybe another large one over here. And there's our card. Oh, but we've got pretty on the outside. We have pretty on the inside. We haven't gotten pretty on the envelope yet. I'm just looking at the time. I think I'm just going to show you the envelope I did because you know how to do this. I took a piece of 6x6 six six, uh, designer series paper. I cut it in half. I put one half on here. The other half is sitting, waiting to go on my envelope for today, which I will do afterwards. Then there was a piece left over that I trimmed off. I flattened it out and put it on the bottom. And there we have our envelope and our card. Now my question for you, well, let's get some of the junk out of the way, is I really liked the sparkle paper the shimmery white paper, but it's not really white and everything else that's white on this card is truly white. And I don't think, I don't know if you can see the shimmer in the paper. It's pretty, but it's not an in your face shimmer. So this one I just did with the whisper white and my card base is the thick whisper white. Um, I think I forgot to tell you that. So which one do you like best? The one that's just a little bit off white or the one that carries the white through on the front also? So let me know what you think. And I'm glad you like it. Thank you so much for sticking with me. And I will talk to you later.